きです。Thanks, Xiao Liang, for the、uh, introduction. So, yeah, I mean, I also didn't realize that we have known each other for 20 years.、Uh, actually, yesterday, I,、uh, during one of my appointments, I was meeting with、uh, Yang, and Yang,、uh, the first sentence Yang said to me was that,、uh, "What happened to you, Chen Ke? You look older." <laughs> and,、uh, well, I mean, well, I mean, I cannot、uh, possibly look younger. So,、uh, you know, I guess, I guess time flies. But yeah, you know. yeah. Anyway, so I will talk about. Uh, well, interacting TI with synthetic high dimensions. The, all the、uh, key words are highlighted.、Uh, this work is done in collaboration with uh, uh, KIDP postdoc, more postdoc,、uh, Chao Mingjian, who actually used to be、uh, a student of Xiao Liang. And、uh, this is the、uh, the paper about this、uh, work. Well, okay. So high dimensions. Actually, so、uh, as a theorist, actually、uh, we have our dreams. I mean, sometimes we. Daydream about、uh, higher dimension. For example,、uh, what if the world is actually beyond the three plus one dimension?、Uh, well, but the harsh reality is that、uh, when we dream about this, I mean, more often than not, we get uh, uh, waked up by、uh, some voice. Actually,、uh, some people will yell at us and say that,、uh, "Wake up!" I mean, the world is only three plus one dimension. Actually, literally, I had、uh, papers studying、uh, higher dimensional physics, and actually, the referee would actually would say that, "Okay, this is very interesting, but actually has nothing to do with our real world." So that's the, that's the situation. But still,、uh, this kind of reality does not、uh, stop theorists from、uh, dreaming big. Okay, so for example. Uh, actually, uh, one of one of the examples of studying higher dimensional physics within the condensed matter context was actually uh, 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 done by one of the most visionary uh, uh, physicists in our in our time,、uh, Shou Chun Zhang, and his student at the time, Jiang Pinghu, in 2001. I mean, they generalized the、uh, quantum Hall effect to a from two dimension to four dimension. So we know that the quantum、uh, quantum Hall effect in two dimension, they are just about a two dimensional、uh, electron gas. Uh, under the magnetic field, but the four-dimensional quantum Hall effect actually, in their generalization, actually is、uh, is on a four-dimensional sphere with a、uh, SU2 magnetic flux、uh, through the four-dimensional sphere. Okay, so that's a very beautiful generalization, and actually based on some very beautiful math called a second half math. So this is the first. I mean, this is the first uh, uh, example of uh, uh, higher-dimensional exploration of uh, beautiful physics. But later on, actually, uh, uh, studying of higher dimensional physics becomes actually uh, popular 
uh, within Kinetics Matter. For example, there's a tenfold way classification of a topological insulator. So actually, uh, when they classify topological insulator with a different uh, symmetries, they actually uh, didn't stop at just a one, two, three dimension. They pushed all the way to any dimension. But actually, of course, actually, uh, this dimension, I mean, they are, you can say they are not very physical because actually uh, uh, they are, uh, they are not uh, within the, our physical dimensions, okay? Uh, well, okay, but actually uh, uh, this has uh, changed since uh, last year, I would claim, because the last year there was a very, very beautiful experiment which actually uh, claimed to realize the four-dimensional quantum Hall effect, uh, which I will explain. Uh, later, but first of all, let me uh, let me try to put uh, topologic insulator in a bigger context. Okay, I mean this actually is more like an introduction of topologic insulator. I'm not sure whether it's uh, necessary in Stanford because Stanford is like a center of topologic insulator. But, but let me do it anyway. So uh, basically, we study. I mean, topologic insulator is one example. It's one example of uh, uh, quantum disordered, quantum disordered ground state. So let's imagine that we consider the ground state of a local Hamiltonian, ground state of a local Hamiltonian, and then the most of the uh, local Hamiltonian of the ground, I mean, sorry, uh, most of the local Hamiltonian will have a ground state which is a uh, uh, direct product state, which means that is a, the global wave function will be the product of a wave function on, on every unit cell. So this kind of wave function is called a direct product state, and it's also semi-classical, which means that uh, there's a very little entanglement, very little quantum entanglement between uh, different regions of the space. Okay, but actually uh, uh, the quantum world is actually very, very rich. So in addition to the semi-classical product state kind of a quantum disorder state, there are many, many other states which are also known and also the ground state of quantum many body uh, you know, local Hamiltonian, but they are generically different from the product state. The most famous example is the uh, topological phase. For example, the fractional quantum Hall states, it has a topological degeneracy in the bulk, and the degeneracy only depends on the topology of the bulk manifold, uh, and also has anion, has many, many different kind of anions. So this kind of state are called topological phase. They are generically different from the, from the product state. And also a second kind of a quantum, quantum disorder state is the gapless quantum disorder state. Actually, it has a word called the algebraic liquid phase. So for example, there's a famous model called the Kitaev's model. The Kitaev's model on the honeycomb lattice uh, is exactly soluble. Its ground state is uh, gapless. The ground state corresponds to Mariner from and coupled with some uh, gauge field. And uh, so this actually is totally disordered, which means that if we calculate the correlation function, there's no uh, there's no uh, long-range correlation between any uh, order parameter, but the gap is zero, okay? The gap is zero, so it's actually a, uh, a gapless state, and also the correlation function will decay as a power law, so it's an algebraic liquid phase. And a topological insulator belong to the third kind, uh, third kind of non-trivial uh, quantum disordered ground state. So it's actually the bulk has a trivial spectrum, has a non-degenerate and a gapped bulk, but the boundary actually has a non-trivial spectrum. The boundary can be gapless or degenerate, and the boundary is gapless or degenerate protected by certain symmetry. So in, in other words, they, I mean, so there's another word for this kind of state, it's called a symmetry protected topological state, okay? Okay, so let me take a closer look at the topological insulator. So basically, uh, so let's talk about a D-dimensional topological insulator. By D-dimension, I mean the D-dimension means the spatial dimension, okay? So if the boundary is a D minus one dimensional uh, system. So actually in the D-dimensional bulk, the bulk is always gapped and the non-degenerate and the boundary, the D minus one dimensional boundary is actually going to have a non-trivial spectrum, which means that it's going to be either gapless or degenerate. And this gaplessness and degeneracy actually is protected by certain symmetry, which means that suppose I break this uh, necessary symmetry, the boundary will also have a trivial spectrum. The boundary will be gapped and also non-degenerate, okay? So actually another very important feature of the edge state, of the boundary state, is that uh, this uh, gapless edge state actually cannot be realized without the bulk, okay? Cannot be realized with the bulk. Uh, it can only exist as the boundary of a D-dimensional system. Uh, so for example, the simple example will, will be that in the quantum Hall system, we know that the boundary is a chiral fermion, and we know that there's a, there's a theorem which says that uh, in one-dimensional lattice model, we can never realize a chiral fermion, okay? We can always, I mean, we can only realize the, uh, we can only realize a non-chiral fermion in a one-dimensional system. So this actually means that suppose we are 
a uh, animal uh, which lives as a one-dimensional world as the boundary of a uh, two-dimensional quantum Hall system and we can only do very, very low energy experiment which means that we cannot probe the physics in the bulb but we can actually do an experiment as a boundary. Suppose we see the chiral fermion which actually is a low energy physics. Suppose we see the chiral fermion then based on the theorem I can al already tell that my world is not a one-dimensional world. My world must be a one-dimensional boundary of a two-dimensional world. Okay, that's actually what the, uh, this uh, theory, I mean, this theorem tells us. So basically, the uh, the boundaries that can only exist as the boundary of the of the higher-dimensional system. Okay. So uh, where is the topology? So so far, actually, it, it does not seem like a topology plays a role in the in the story. But topology actually plays a role in uh, in this way. So for example, how do we describe an insulator? Okay. So insulator and the superconductor. Uh, they are similar in certain way, other than that one is superconducting, one is insulating. But actually, they are, they are, they are. I mean, many other phenomena are. I mean, uh, many other features are very similar. For example, suppose I want to describe a topologic insulator. I need uh, two bands, and in uh, condensed matter jargon, the lower band, well, the band with the lower energy is called a valence band. The band with the higher energy is called a conducting band. Okay, and we put the chemical potential in between. Okay, the Fermi level chemical potential in between, which means that we feel all the electron states, single particle electron state in the valence band, but we keep all the conduction band states uh, empty. Okay? And for the simplest uh, uh, situation where there are only two bands, okay, one is valence band which is the field and one is conduction band which is not field, we can write down a very simple two band model okay, which looks like this. Okay? So the two band Hamiltonian is a mapping from the uh, momentum space, from the momentum space to a target space. And the target space this n vector I mean, topologically can be viewed as a sphere, okay, as a sphere. And in a crystal system, in a solid state system, there's a very beautiful, I mean, there's a very beautiful feature in solid state system, which is that uh, the momentum space is also a compact manifold. The momentum space is not infinite. Okay? The reason is that uh, in quantum mechanics we know that uh, for a pair of conjugate variable, if one is discrete, the other must be periodic. Okay, I mean, just like just like uh, suppose I define a particle moving or a ring, so it means a space is periodic. Then the then it's a conjugate variable with the angular momentum must be must be uh, uh, discrete. So same thing happening in the in the in the crystal system. The space is uh, crystallized. Okay, so we only have translation symmetry, but we only have discrete translation symmetry. So the space is, di is uh, discretized. So it means that the momentum must be periodic. Okay, one is uh, discrete, the other must be periodic. So it means that in the solid state system, it's very beautiful. Thus, the momentum space is actually a periodic compact manifold. So this means that any Hamiltonian in a solid state system is a mapping, can be viewed as a mapping from the compact momentum space uh, compact manifold to a target manifold. And this kind of mapping can have topological non-trivial uh, classification. So this is where their topology comes in. Okay? For example, if I consider a two-dimensional topological insulator, then this mapping, this uh, Hamiltonian is a mapping from a two-dimensional compact momentum space to the two-dimensional target space, which is a sphere. And this kind of mapping can, can easily have a topological number, okay, which actually is equivalent to a chain number. And actually, uh, for example, this configuration, this, uh, I mean, imagine this is a uh, momentum space. And actually, uh, in the middle, this uh, n vector is pointing down, and in the outside, it's pointing up, and, and in between, it uh, gradually turns from down to up. Okay, gradually turns from down to up. So this kind of uh, configuration will actually give you chain number equals to one. So this kind of configuration in the momentum space will give you a chain insulator. Will give you a quantum hall with a uh, hall conductivity equals to e squared over over h. Okay. And also, suppose we are considering a uh, two-band Hamiltonian in three-dimensional space. Okay, then uh, this Hamiltonian is mapping the three-dimensional momentum space to a compact manifold, which is uh, S2. So this kind of mapping can be viewed as a mapping from three-dimensional sphere to two-dimensional sphere, which again has a topological non-trivial mapping. It's called a half mapping. Okay, it's called a half mapping. So in three-dimensional uh, space, we can define a uh, insulator which is sort of topological. It's called a half insulator, but actually uh, this half insulator is slightly uh, fragile. We need some symmetry to guarantee that it's uh, it's not trivial. Okay, but this is some subtlety. But I'm saying, but I'm showing you that how topology plays a role in this kind of uh, in this kind of uh, topological insulator uh, story. But actually, you can notice that so far. Everything is just uh, everything just non-intacting. Okay, so far everything is non-intacting. The reason is that I define 
My Hamiltonian is a single particle Hamiltonian. There's a single particle moment in K. But once we have interaction, in general, single particle moment is not conserved. Okay, I cannot label a state with a single particle moment, okay, because two particles can scatter and become you know, some two other particles, so the single particle moment is not conserved. So topological insulator in this state, at this stage, totally non-intacting. Okay? Well, anyway, so uh, now let me introduce the synthetic dimension. So before the experiment, synthetic dimension has been used uh, by theorists, uh, including the chair, okay, uh, as a theoretical tool to make connection between a topological insulator in different dimensions. So for example, this is an example. Uh, this is the two-dimensional chain insulator. Let's imagine it's a two-dimensional chain insulator Hamiltonian. The Hamiltonian is parameterized by two parameters, momentum along the x direction kx and momentum along the y direction ky. But actually we can view ky as a parameter. Okay, let's, let's, let's view ky as a parameter. Then uh, for every KY, for every this parameter, this Hamiltonian become a one-dimensional uh, Hamiltonian. Okay, become a one-dimensional Hamiltonian. It only has one moment on KX. And the theta, I mean, because the crystal moment is periodic, okay, is defining a compact manifold, then this theta is also, can, can also be viewed as a, tu I mean, a periodic tuning parameter. Okay, can also be viewed as a periodic tuning parameter. Then this chain number, which is defined in the two-dimensional space, okay, the chain number defined in the two-dimensional space, becomes the quantized charge pumping after I tune this theta periodically. Okay, suppose I tune this theta from zero to two pi, I will pump precisely charge one from right side of the chain to left side of the chain, and this quantization is precisely calculated, quantized by this uh, chain number in the two-dimensional space, okay, in the two-dimensional space. So in this way, actually, we can actually make connection between the uh, topological insulator or topological phenomena in uh, different uh, dimensions, okay, in different dimensions. So this is the basic idea, actually, in, uh, uh, for the synthetic dimension. So this was an experiment, and an actually very, very beautiful experiment done last year, okay, which actually uh, claimed that they realized the uh, four-dimensional quantum hall. So what they actually did was that they actually have a, a two-dimensional physical space. They have a two-dimensional optical lattice, and this two-dimensional optical lattice is actually superposed by two lasers with uh, two different uh, 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 wavelengths, okay, which means that actually we have a uh, you know, shorter modulation potential and a longer modulation potential, and the total uh, total potential will look like this, and the mu equals to x or y. Okay, but actually, uh, you can see that uh, we can displace these two uh, uh, potential a little bit, and this displacement will introduce two uh, tuning parameters. Is phi, and the phi is periodic. Okay, phi is periodic, but because actually, you know, if if, if you translate by one less constant, actually, it's, it's, it's I mean, it uh, equals to zero translation. Okay, but then suppose we design the band structure very well, then actually we can define the Berry curvature and the Berry connection by uh, using the wave function of the system and the derivative over the momentum and also the tuning parameter, and using that we can define the second turn number. Okay, and actually they actually they actually realize the second turn number equals to one state, which actually correspond to a four-dimensional. Uh, quantum Hall state with the chain number, second chain number equals to equals to one. Okay, so this is how they use the synthetic technique to realize to realize the four-dimensional quantum Hall state. Actually, it's very very simple. Okay, so actually we have a two actual physical crystal momentum, and we have two fake or two synthetic momentum, which which are just a tun uh, tuning parameters, which are just a adiabatic uh, periodic tuning parameters. Actually, actually we can just view them. As a uh, as a uh, extra dimensional uh, crystal momentum. Okay, okay. So what's the basic property of the four dimensional quantum Hall state? Okay, suppose we just view that we we have realized a four dimensional quantum Hall state. So what is the basic property of that? So it turns out that's uh, the boundary. The potential happens in two directions. Yeah. So potential happens in in the, in the two directions. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's a single particle level. So, so far, a single particle level. Yeah, right. Yeah, so that's why the wave function the parameterized by kx, ky, and the phi x, phi y. So you can just define the Berry, I mean, you can, you can define the Berry connection, you know, I mean, in all four dimensions. Yeah. Well, anyway, so actually, so what's the physical property of the four-dimensional quantum Hall state? Suppose we have realized the four-dimensional quantum Hall state, then it's a three-dimensional boundary will be 
uh, while from it. Okay, will be while from it. So, I, so, uh, uh, so for example, at one boundary, uh, it will be a, a left while from it, and and on the other one boundary, it will be a right while from it. And also, this has been. I mean, I mean, there's a no-go theorem which proves that the while from it with a single chirality cannot be realized on a three-dimensional lattice. Uh, either okay. So, for example, actually, uh, uh, there's a, uh, there are some very famous materials in condensed matter system called a wild semi-metal. Okay, in wild semi-metal, we always people always realize a pair of wild fermions with the opposite characteristics. We realize one left wild fermion, then we realize then we have to realize another right wild fermion. They are they are just separated in the moment in space. Okay, but actually, the total character must be zero. Okay, but actually, uh, a single wild fermion can be realized as the boundary. Of a uh, four-dimensional system, okay, as a boundary of four-dimensional system. Okay, so so far these are all just the non-intact in physics. Okay, then what about uh, interaction? Okay, what about interaction? So this actually has been a uh, a question people start to ask on the first day. People start to uh, study the topological insulator. So topological insulator was actually defined for non-intact environment. Then actually you can easily ask this question: How does the uh, interaction modify uh, or affect? The classification of a topological insulator. So it turns out that people realized that in 2009, people realized that actually uh, interaction can reduce the classification of a topological insulator. By reduce, I mean just uh, uh, some topological insulator, which I mean, which is non-trivial, without interaction will become trivial under interaction. Okay. So this is an example of a one-dimensional. Uh, famous topological superconductor, which is called a Kitab chain. Okay, which is called a Kitab chain. So uh, the physical picture is very simple. So basically, uh, suppose this is my uh, suppose this is my unit cell. Okay, this is my unit cell, and every unit cell have two Majorana fermions. Okay, every unit have two Majorana fermions. Then this phase, we turn on strong coupling between the two Majorana fermions in the same unit cell. Okay, then actually we can see that this is a trivial state. Because there's no edge state. Okay, every fermion, every Majorana fermion is paired with another Majorana fermion, so there's no edge state. But then, uh, suppose I turn on very strong coupling between this Majorana fermion and this Majorana fermion and this Majorana fermion and this Majorana fermion, then we can see that this is a non-trivial topological state, because at each boundary there's a dangling Majorana fermion zero mode. Okay, there's dangling Majorana fermion zero mode. So it turns out in this system, suppose we have Time inversal symmetry. Okay, suppose we have certain time inversal symmetry. It has a Z classification. Z classification means that I can just make Z copies. I can make arbitrary number copies of this uh, topological superconductor and stack them together. Okay, and then no matter what kind of interaction I turn on between these uh, between these uh, uh, chains, as long as the interaction preserves the time inversal symmetry, the boundary will always remain non-trivial. The boundary will always have a degeneracy protected by Time inversal symmetry. Okay, this this is what the Z classification means. But then this gentleman showed that uh, under interaction, the classification becomes Z8. Okay, so classification reduced from Z to Z8. This actually means that okay, something magic happens when we have eight copies of the chain. Okay, when when we have eight copies of the chain, then actually under interaction, the eight minor from a zero mode as the boundary can be gapped out and non-degenerate. Without breaking any time inversal symmetry, okay. So it means the boundary spectrum can actually be trivialized under interaction, okay. It also means that uh, suppose we don't have interaction, then actually if I tune some parameter, if I tune some parameter to drive the system from the topological superconductor to trivial superconductor, then there must be a phase transition, okay, for eight copies of the topological superconductor for the, for the Kitab chain. Without interaction, there must be a phase transition, but under interaction. I can adiabatically connect this end to this end without closing the bulk gap at all. Okay, without a phase transition at all. It means that under interaction, we actually we can actually adiabatically connect this part of the phase diagram to this part of the of the phase diagram without without closing the bulk gap. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is the first example of an interaction reduced classification of a topological insulator. Okay, first example. But then once we know the first example, actually we can generalize this. To other examples, okay. Then uh, there is a very famous topological superconductor called a helium three B. Of course, like the helium three is a fermionic atom, uh, it's charge neutral. So actually, there is a controversy whether we should call it a topological superconductor or topological superfluid. But actually, mathematically, they are the same thing, okay. So for a, uh, a helium three B state, the bulk is again is fully gapped, 
and non-generate, and actually uh, in some limit, it can be described by a three-dimensional massive Majorana fermion. And then its boundary is actually a two-dimensional massless Majorana fermion. Okay, that's the boundary of a hidden 3B state. And actually it's massless protected by time inversal symmetry. As long as I preserve time inversal symmetry, the boundary must be gapless and it must be a two-dimensional uh, uh, massless Majorana fermion. Okay? And also it has a Z classification without any symmetry. Okay, it has a Z classification without any, sorry, uh, it, has a, it has Z classification without any interaction, which means that I can, I can stack as many copies of a hidden 3B together as I want, then the boundary will remain uh, gapless, okay, without any interaction. But then, since uh, 2013, and many, many groups have been using different uh, methods to study the interaction effect on the helium 3B. And the conclusion, I mean, drawn from different methods, is that uh, um, the classification is reduced from Z to Z16, okay? This actually means that for 16 copies of the system, first of all, 16 copies of the two-dimensional massless minor fermion can be gapped out without degeneracy, without breaking time inversal symmetry uh, by interaction. And a second, it means that uh, in the bulk, if I tune the system, if I drive a phase transition between the helium 3B and the trivial state, okay, without interaction, there must be a phase transition. There must be a gap closing in the bulk. But under, I mean, under interaction, I mean, under interaction, actually, there's a curve in the parameter space that I can connect this end to this end without closing the gap at all. Okay, this is another, another example where the uh, interaction, interaction actually uh, uh, affect or change the classification of the uh, uh, topological insulator, okay, topological insulator or topological superconductor, okay? Okay, so right now, actually, uh, I mean, because we know this example, actually, we can generalize the study to many, many dimensions and many situations. Actually, it's, it's always going to be Z8, Z16, or something like that, okay? Okay, so I have mentioned that uh, two different uh, diagnoses of saying that a uh, topological insulator is uh, trivialized, okay? But actually, these two diagnoses, actually, they are uh, equivalent. They are believed to be equivalent, okay? So first of all is that... Uh, Suppose we can prove that so the boundary, the edge state, is actually gapped and non-generate under interaction, then actually uh, this system becomes uh, trivialized, okay? It's a, it's a trivial insulator. Another, another scenario is that if we can prove that uh, there's no phase transition, there's no phase transition between the topological end and also the trivial end, okay, then actually uh, the topological phase is also trivialized. These two statements are believed to be equivalent to each other, based on the following picture, okay? So for example, suppose I start with the trivial state, okay, the trivial state, and I grow bubbles, okay, and I grow bubbles, or I grow domains of a topological state, topological insulator in the middle, okay? And uh, suppose there are gapless domain wall states between the topological state and trivial state, then at some point, when I enlarge, when I increase the size of a topological state, then the domain wall will percolates, okay, will percolate and connect with each other and make the entire bulk gapless. And this percolation point becomes the uh, gapless phase transition point in the bulk, okay, becomes gapless phase transition point in the bulk. Then actually you can see that suppose we can prove that the boundary is actually, I mean the domain wall is gapped out and non-generate by the interaction, then actually it means that, that I mean, there's no phase, I mean it does not have to be a phase transition between one end of the trivial insulator and the other end of the non-trivial insulator. Okay, so it means that everything is trivialized. Okay, everything is trivialized. So these two statements actually, is actually uh, uh, equivalent, it's believed to be equivalent, and this picture of phase transition called the trocar cardin the network picture of the topological, of the topological phase transition. Okay? Okay, so this is our current understanding of uh, interacting topological insulator and to interacting topological superconductor, okay? So we know for sure that interaction can actually reduce or uh, uh, collapse the classification of a topological insulator or topological superconductor, okay? But now let's imagine what if some of the dimensions are synthetic, okay? What if some of the dimensions are synthetic, okay? So this is a new question to ask, okay? This is a new question. So let's, let's, so, so let's actually, Let's say that we have a total dimension capital D, okay, total dimension capital D. This total dimension capital D including the actual dimension small d and the delta, delta is a synthetic dimension, okay, synthetic dimension. Delta simply means that we have some, we have delta different uh, tuning parameters which actually simulate the uh, extra dimension crystal momentum, okay, extra dimension crystal momentum, okay. Then uh, what is the interaction 
in this uh, total dimension capital D. Okay, what's the interaction? So in condensate matter system, we usually assume that the interaction is actually local. Okay, we assume the interaction is local. Okay, it's just an integral of local interaction defined on different patch of the entire system. Okay, but it turns out that with synthetic dimension, the the interaction is fundamentally different because actually uh, the uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, crystal momentum in the synthetic dimension, there are tuning parameters, okay? They are always numbers. Because they are always numbers, they are always conserved, okay? They're always conserved. So this means that the interaction term will look like this in general, okay? Interaction will look like this. They are also parameterized by the extra, extra momentum P, okay? Which actually is the, is the tuning parameter, okay? So interaction will generically take a form like this, okay? And because the interaction will generically look like this, it's actually local in the uh, d-dimensional actual space. Uh, question? Well, finish the sentence and then yes. I have okay, okay. Yeah, so this uh, interaction will be local in the d-dimensional actual space and local in the uh, momentum space or synthetic momentum space in the delta dimensional synthetic dimension. But actually, if we do Fourier transformation to the uh, capital D dimension, it's going to be very, very bizarre looking non-local interaction, okay? Uh, a question, Bob? Well, yes. So I just want to make sure I understand what you've written. So yep. X is a, a real position, and yeah. P is a synthetic one? Yeah, P is a synthetic momentum. Right. Yeah. So presumably we could just expand the space, and then right. both real. Both real, what do you mean? Make a, you make actually, the wave magic wand and the synthetic dimensions are actual real ones. Uh, yes, and right. Dimension. And then these, the X and P aren't different. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, the uh, synthetic dimension is already infinite because P is actually already continuous, right? If P is continuous, it means, it means 2 pi over L is actually infinitesimal, so it means L, L is actually infinite in the synthetic dimension. So yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. Here's, let me explain what's bothering me. Okay. So I can admit that it's, this is a scattering mechanism. Okay. okay. And, uh, what is between is 2 non-real dimensions. Interacting states of some band structure. Yeah. And and um, it's uh, if we did this with a real band structure with real synthetic dimension, there would be uh, conservation laws. Yes. In those scattering matrix elements, and you couldn't just make up anything. Right. They have to be, they have to be something uh, something definite. Now, here's my question: Now you could just have any scattering matrix element you want. No, no, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, this, so, so for example, you can see that uh, along the synthetic dimension, the conservation of momentum is actually much, much more strict, right? I mean, it's not just to conserve, it's, it's, I mean, the, 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 the constraint is not just to conserve the total momentum, it, it has to look like this. We don't have a mixture between different momentum along the synthetic dimension. I mean, if I only look at this term, I would uh, say, why don't we just consider PI as a coordinate? Then yeah. Totally yeah. Precisely. Yeah, yeah. You can. The other terms, then you have to call it a momentum, which is why. The yeah. Right. You can. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Right. It's a, it's a bizarre looking. Or, or actually, so may, yeah. Maybe you can say that viewing P as a momentum is actually a. Uh, it's not necessary. You can say it's not necessary. But I'm saying that suppose we say that uh, non-interacting uh, band structure with synthetic dimension is a. We, we, we suppose we claim we realized a, a higher dimension topology instead. Then actually, this is the interaction we have to face. Okay, this interaction we have to face. Whether it's necessary to call that synthetic dimension as an extra dimension or not, that's a different question, you know. Yeah. Okay, so let me continue, okay? Okay, so, so in general, I mean, we want to study, uh, you know, the classification, okay, classification of top load insulator with the uh, actual dimension D and, uh, and also synthetic dimension delta, okay? And uh, under, under interaction, okay, under interaction. Of course, actually, uh, uh, well, I mean, uh, yeah, so we focus on two examples. I mean, these two examples actually uh, can give us non-trivial results, okay? So other examples that may give us uh, trivial results, but these two examples give us non-trivial results, okay? So we know that uh, for U1 cross Z2 symmetric top lot insulators, then uh, without any interaction, okay, without any interaction, uh, then we know that uh, for even space dimension, the classification is Z, for all space dimension, the classification is uh, trivial, okay? And for this case, which is the U1 cross time inversal, then it's called A3 class of top load insulator. Then actually, uh, 
uh, for non-intacting case, actually uh, it's for odd dimension, it's actually Z, for even dimension, it's actually zero, okay? But suppose this capital D includes the uh, actual dimension and also the uh, synthetic dimension. Then the, under this interaction, the classification will reduce from Z to something like this, okay? It's actually complicated to read, but actually uh, you can see that the delta will play a role in this, I mean, the syntax dimension will play a role in this uh, classification uh, reduction, okay, in the classification reduction. And so, so, does, uh, so does this case, okay? But of course, actually, to, to actually fully analyze the problem, okay, to get the answer for every dimension is actually very technical, but I, so I will explain the simplest example, okay? I will, I will, I'll, yeah, I will explain the simple example, which actually is very easy to understand, okay? Why, why there is uh, such a, uh, uh, you know, a reduction of uh, classification, okay? So let's look at a uh, total two-dimensional tabular insulator, okay? Total two-dimension, which means capital D is actually two, okay? Capital D is actually two. So, uh, so you, it's a U1 cross Z2 tabular insulator, which means that, I mean, so what it means is that I have two uh, layers of a chain insulator. One layer has a chain number equals to one. The other layer has a chain number equals to minus one, okay? And then there's a Z2 symmetry Actually, the first layer, the chain number equals to one layer, carries a Z2 charge equals to zero, okay? And the chain number equals to minus one layer, the fermion carries Z2 charge equals to one, okay? Carries Z2 charge equals to one. Then actually, uh, without mixing, without mixing these two layers, the boundary states, actually just a non-chiral, uh, helical, counter-propagating uh, fermions, okay, or, or, or we can say it's a one direct fermion, one dimensional direct fermion, which look like this, okay, there's a left moving mode and a right moving mode. And under the Z2 transformation, the left fermion will just not change at all, but the right fermion will, will gain a minus sign, okay, the right fermion will gain a minus sign, okay? So this is the, uh, and, and then we can see that uh, the boundary states cannot be gapped out. The reason is that if I want to gap out the boundary states, we will have to mix the left moving or, and the right moving. Or in other words, we have to backscatter the left moving to right moving or backscatter right moving to left moving. But once we add a turn, we can mix the left moving and the right moving mode, then this turn will break the Z2 symmetry, okay? Because one change on Z2, the other does not change on Z2. So this actually means that under the U1 and Z2 symmetry, this system is a top load insulator protected by U1 cross Z2 symmetry. And also, no matter how many copies of the system we make, it remains a non-trivial topological insulator because we cannot turn on any master which mix the left moving mode and right moving mode, okay? Okay, however, uh, the situation becomes very different once we turn on interaction, okay? Once we turn on interaction. So it has been started in the last few years. Uh, there are many, many groups which started this. Actually, uh, uh, this system, suppose I make four copies of the system, okay? Make four copies of the system, then the system become trivial, okay? Then the system become trivial. So why four become trivial? So actually, because, I mean, we know that a one, uh, chain number equals to one chain insulator is actually equivalent, topologically equivalent to two copies of a P plus IP topological superconductor, uh, whose boundary actually correspond to two channels of chiral Majorana fermion. Then four copies of the system actually will have a, uh, eight channels of counter-propagating Majorana fermion as the boundary. So actually, we can use the Fedekovsky and the Kitavs result for the class, I mean, for the uh, interaction reduced classification of the Kitavs chain. And then uh, using that result, we can directly conclude that actually, uh, uh, for four copies of this, this system, which correspond to eight copies of P plus minus IP topologic superconductor, okay, the boundary can be gapped out without breaking any symmetry, okay? So this is the, you know, we can just quote the result, the result from Fedekovsky and the Kitav's uh, uh, Z8 classification paper, okay? So it means that uh, for this situation with U1 cross Z2 with a capital D equals to two and a delta equals to zero, which means that every dimension in the physical dimension, then the classification is reduced from Z to Z4, okay? Classification is reduced from Z to Z4. Okay, so now let's imagine that uh, one of the two dimensions is uh, synthetic, okay? And actually, uh, in order to make sure that the, the, you know, the synthetic tuning parameter is always a number is conserved, and it means that we cut the boundary parallel with the synthetic dimension, okay? Parallel with, with the synthetic dimension. Then, a gapless edge state, okay, means that there's a level crossing, okay, means there's a level crossing, okay, because actually this direction, this P, becomes a tuning parameter, okay, then uh, the gapless modes, I mean, in the uh, the original two-dimensional top-loaded insulator picture, becomes the uh, 
a level crossing when we tune the P, okay, become a level crossing when we tune P, okay? So it means that uh, uh, this system becoming a, a non-trivial two-dimensional synthetic topological insulator simply means that when I tune this uh, parameter P, without closing the bound gap, I will have to have a level crossing as the boundary, okay? If I have to have a level crossing as the boundary, it means that the system is a non-trivial synthetic topological insulator, okay? So we just have to analyze whether there has to be a non-trivial, I mean, whether there has to be a level crossing or gap closing as the boundary or not when we tune this uh, tuning parameter P, okay? When we tune the tuning parameter P, okay? So now let's first think about uh, one single layer, okay, of the system, okay? One single layer of the system. For one single layer of the system, it's very easy to see that based on this picture, when P is very large, okay, now P is a tuning parameter, when P is very large, the ground state of the boundary state will be the left fermion has a one particle, okay, but the right fermion has a zero particle, okay, the, the left fermion has, will, will fill one left fermion, but the right fermion will be a vacuum, okay? But then when P is very small, then the left fermion will be a vacuum, but the right fermion will have one particle, okay? And remember that a right fermion and a left fermion, they carry opposite Z2 charge. This means that uh, at the two ends of this tuning, these two ends will carry opposite Z2 charge. This means that, uh, I mean, no matter what interaction we turn on, there has to be a level crossing. There has to be a phase transition when I tune P. Okay, because the quantum, because actually the quantum number has to change. The ground state quantum number has to change, okay? So when I tune P, there has to be a phase transition. So it means that under interaction and the synthetic techniques, this will still be a uh, non-trivial topological insulator, okay? A question? Sorry, uh, G2 charge can't have a sign, right? Sorry? G2 charge cannot have a sign. One or minus one, or zero or one. Zero or oh, one. Zero or one, yeah, you can, you can consider the E to I, that zero, no, yeah, anyway. Yeah, so that means that for one copy, this is still a non-trivial synthetic topological insulator. But, but the situation will be very different when I have, when I have two copies, okay, when I have two copies. For two copies, you can see that now I have, you know, just a double this crossing. You can see that actually when P is very large, I have a two, okay, uh, left moving modes. And, uh, uh, and when P is very small, I have two right moving modes. But for two left moving modes and two right moving modes, they have the same Z2 charge, okay, because Z2 squared is still one, okay? This means that these two ends, they, they don't have, I mean, they don't have different quantum number, okay? They, they don't have different quantum number. So, they mean, so this means that in principle, by tuning this P, it's possible to turn on an interaction, it's possible to turn on interaction which actually makes a, you know, which actually avoid the level crossing, okay? Which avoid the level crossing. Indeed, we can design a very simple interaction, okay? It's, I, mean, I mean, this actually is a zero plus one dimensional quantum mechanical problem, which can be solved exactly, okay? So we can turn on a, we can design the interaction, okay? We can design the interaction. And indeed, with this interaction, by tuning this P, we can see that there's always a gap, okay? Between the many body ground state and also the excited state, okay? There's, a, there's always a gap. Okay, which means that the level crossing as the boundary is actually, is actually avoided, okay, which means that the system becomes a trivial synthetic topological insulator. Okay? This actually means that for two copies of the system, okay, that it's already trivialized by interaction. So this means that under interaction, this topological insulator uh, with a 2, 1, which means that with one dimension is the delta, actually uh, it has a Z2 classification. With 2, 0, it's actually a Z4 classification. Okay? With 2, 0, it's a Z4 classification. Okay, so that means that the synthetic dimension does affect the classification of these uh, topological insulators. Okay, so you can see that while we solve this problem, okay, I mean this is actually the simplest uh, trivial example, okay, but actually you can, you, can, you can already see that by, you know, when we study this problem, we sort of reduced a two-dimensional problem to a zero-dimensional problem, okay, which means that we reduced a two-one problem, okay, two dimension with one dimension synthetic, to a zero, zero dimensional problem, okay? Becomes a zero dimensional uh, quantum mechanical problem which we can solve uh, exactly, okay? Which we can solve exactly. So this turns out to be in general true, okay? So this turns out to be in, uh, in general true. So for example, suppose I want to study the uh, classification of a higher dimensional synthetic topological insulator under, under uh, interaction, okay? We, and we, can, we have a D and a delta, then actually uh, we have this kind of a relation. If a four zero is a Z8, and a four one is Z4, four two is Z2, and actually we can always reduce four two to two zero, it's the same classification. We can also reduce four two 
to two one is also the same classification. Okay, also the same classification. Meaning there's some some analytical and, 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 and a physical argument that we can make to make the connection between them. Turns out that in general there's a chain rule. Okay, in general there's a chain rule. Okay, so for a general dimension two n and the delta, it always has. We can argue it always has the same classification under interaction with a general dimension two n minus two and a delta minus one. Okay, and a delta minus one. And actually you can see that there's a whole chain. Okay, you can, you can see there's a there's a whole chain. Okay, for general for general two n and a delta, there's a whole chain. This means that we only need to know, okay, we only need to know the classification of one element of the chain to know the entire chain classification, okay, to know the entire chain classification, okay? And actually, uh, uh, so, so, so this means that this chain rule actually uh, very, uh, you know, significantly simplify the problem, okay, we only need to know one element of the, of the whole chain. But to know this uh, one element, it also requires certain effort, okay, requires certain effort. But actually, based on this chain, we can already make the conclusion, for example, uh, you know, so using some other techniques, we can know that uh, this, uh, I mean, suppose for 2 and 0, the classification must be this, then actually we can actually deduce that for general 2 and delta, the classification must be, must be this one, okay, which means that for this many copies of topological instrument, it will, it will be trivialized by interaction. Okay, so how do we know that one element, okay, so how do we know that one element? There are many, many ways of doing that, okay, but one standard way, okay, one standard way is actually to turn on interaction, Okay, and then we map the interacting fermion problem to a bosonic uh, topological insulated problem, okay, to a bosonic problem, to a bosonic symmetry protein topological uh, uh, state. Okay? So for bosonic pro for interacting bosonic topological insulated, actually uh, it's actually better understood, even though uh, even though the Hamiltonian is more exotic, it's better understood. It's a uh, more uh, more better developed mathematical formula than called a group cohomology to understand them. Okay? So suppose we map uh, this uh, element to a uh, bosonic topological insulator or bosonic SPD state, we can actually just uh, quote their results, and, and we can we can guess the we can guess the answer for this uh, for this one single element of the whole chain. And based on that, we can derive the classification of the entire of the entire chain. Okay? Yeah. Well, anyway, so uh, yeah, this is the story for one of the two examples that I discussed. I mean, I mean, I, I apologize. I only had time to and a chance to explain the simplest example. Which is the two-dimensional example, which I reduce to a zero-dimensional quantum mechanical problem. But the story actually can be generalized to many, many different cases. Okay, for general dimension, uh, with this symmetry, for general dimension, for this symmetry, actually we can always use the, we can always have a chain rule. Okay, we can always have a chain rule, and then we can use the mapping to bosonic bosonic topological insert to get the classification of the whole chain. Okay, uh, yeah, and then we can get the classification for general dimensions. Okay. So, but still, there are many, many uh, open questions. So, for example, uh, you know, so I use the chain rule, but actually, uh, uh, the, the the way we derive the chain rule is using a physical argument. Okay, we use a physical argument. But actually, there could be a uh, mathematical formula then for the chain rule, which actually I'm not uh, fully aware of. Okay, so this is something that that is waiting to be developed. Okay, that we can we can develop a very nice uh, mathematical chain rule uh, to actually uh, relating. Top lot insulated with synthetic dimension in different uh, uh, scenarios, and also actually this actually now we can I mean we can realize realize top lot insulator or top lot states with higher dimension. Okay, then it's actually uh, it's the time we use our imagination. Okay, so what kind of uh, higher dimensional top states we can actually create? Using the synthetic, using the synthetic techniques. Okay, this actually is something that uh, I'm also thinking about recently. Okay, so actually, a very long time ago, a friend of mine was actually asking me a question that uh, you know, do you ever think about a system, a two-dimensional system, where at every moment in ky there is a Hordan phase in one dimension? Okay, then I told him that this is really crazy. Okay, how can how can such system exist? But actually, this is precisely what can be realized. In the synthetic techniques, okay, you can imagine at every moment in KY, actually there's a uh, uh, one-dimensional exotic state. Okay, then this actually is a, a exotic two-dimensional state, which can be realized using synthetic techniques. So actually, this is the place where we can use our imagination and we can create a lot of uh, exotic higher-dimensional topological insulator. So this is a time that we can, uh, you know, bury ourselves in our daydream. Okay, so that's 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 my talk. Okay, thank you for your for your attention. So, 
there, I want to separate my question in two parts. So you, you talk about the tie of chains, which I want to put over there. Okay? And I want to ask a question about a later piece of your talk, which is about multiple copies of things, which then interact. Now, if I, do I understand correctly that every single thing you've described uh, can be written down as a real space Hamiltonian? Uh. Well, every single thing, I mean, with a synthetic dimension, certainly it's more convenient to write it with the synthetic parameter, which actually is the, which is the interpreted as the momentum in the synthetic dimension. That's what I'm uh, getting at, right? So certainly the optical experiments yeah. can be, are real. Okay? So yes. There, there is something that actually exists in nature. Yeah. Uh, and um, so I think the same is true for the other particular examples that you gave. Namely, we're talking about trivial, non-interacting electrons uh, in bands, yeah. which then talk to each other by means of a pairwise problem. Oh, that's not, I mean, for, for two-body interaction, that's still non-interacting, though. I mean, we are, we are turning on four form an interaction term, right? That, that's what I mean that's by interaction. That's a scattering, right? That's a, that's a, that's a interaction. Yes, I know, right. But actually, sorry, 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 I missed the question. So, so, sorry, what, what's the question? So just your interaction here is local in actual real space. Yeah, it's, it's local in actual real space. Yeah, precisely. It's local in actual real space. Okay, so mm -hmm. in, in principle, one could actually write these models as um, things you have in, in maybe, maybe higher, actual higher dimensions. You could write them down as actual Hamiltonians. Yes. And they're pretty, they're pretty simple. They are non-interacting electrons plus a pairwise interaction. Uh, what, what do you mean by pairwise? It means it has four. OK, fine. Uh, yeah, OK. And uh, so it's standard solid state physics in rather more dimensions, you think, yes? Uh, well. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what standard solid state physics means, actually. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you. The, um, I, can, I, can, I can also say topology instantly is standard solid state physics because everything in the band structure. We talked about classifications yeah. of what can happen. Right. Uh, which is some sensible classifications, but there's a step missing, which is that interaction can be anything. Okay? Yeah, it can be anything. It can yeah. be 20 gazillion megavolts. Okay? It can be so large that it becomes much bigger than the bands. Yes. And I'm suddenly really confused about how you can make strong statements about what the phase diagram looks like when we can't even do that with Coulomb interactions. They, uh, they, 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 they get all sorts okay. of wacky I think, I think, I think, no, no, I think, I think the statement I'm making is that uh, there exists one particular, I mean, there exists a interaction. I'm not specifying the form of the interaction, but I'm saying that there exists the one interaction which can actually connect uh, two phases in a phase diagram. Uh, yeah, in, for some cases, this uh, particular form of the interaction can be written down explicitly in some form, actually, you know, but it, it, it will look very complicated. Uh, but maybe related to Bob's question, yeah. I think that. Like when the interaction is huge, then there's other crazy things. Which I know. Then, 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 then the phase transition to other crazy things. I'm saying that, uh, but, but I'm saying that without phase transition going to other crazy things, you can already connecting one crazy thing to another crazy thing. Well, if you can connect them, they're, they're, they're the same crazy thing. Yeah, they're the same crazy thing. I mean, that, that's what I say by reduced classification. Well, right. So, so it's, 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 this is a phase. This is a phase diagram question where you're studying a little teeny part. Whether it's, a teeny, but whether it's a teeny part or not, I'm not sure, because that depends on how your parameterize the interaction. I can do one over interaction, then actually it's not a teeny part. <laughs> then it's a bigger part. Right? No, but the, the point is that other than the Z, let's say there's eight different phases. Yeah. But in addition to the eight different phases, you could have new phases showing up. Yeah, you can. Strong. Yeah, but yeah, that definitely, that, that's, that, that, that corresponds to Bob's and you know, different crazy things. Yeah. It means that when you turn on very strong interaction, it's totally possible that the system enter a totally crazy thing, which is the different from non-interacting case. Yeah. Um, I have a question. So um, the, it seems like the classification, like the, the rule, the chain rule we talk about, uh, it seems to suggest that the classification of these uh, 
let's say a system with a little d spatial dimension and a delta synthetic dimension, that seems to be the same as the classification of uh, some topological defects in like yes, right. with yeah, I have delta. yeah, I I I have intention to make that connection, but I didn't specify I mean, what I, I didn't talk about it here. But actually, yeah, indeed, there's a connection. Yeah, indeed, there's a connection. Right, but actually, uh, uh, to make spatial connection, actually, but then we have to specify a lot about the spatial symmetry and something like that. Here, I want to, you know, I want to say, so, and so I want to emphasize that we don't have to worry about the spatial symmetry at all, uh, because actually, uh, you know, topological defect, we already depend on what kind of defect you, you know, you, you draw around, around the defect, so, yeah. Yeah, but you're right. I mean, there's, uh, there could be a connection there. The physical consequence of these, just like the example you showed, physical consequence is like when I tune that, key parameter, that synthetic parameter, I could make some topological defects, and then... Yes, right, yeah, yeah. Other questions? Now let's thank Senka again. <laughs> <laughs>